Welcome everyone to another Wise Women Roundtable. It is a wild time that we're in. We're recording this during the probably almost the exact center point of the eclipse cauldron that started on uh, <clears throat> September 17th with a um, partial lunar eclipse that was also a perigee full moon, meaning close to the earth, having a bigger impact. And then we're, that's taking us to the uh, October 2nd annular solar eclipse, meaning that it's like a total solar eclipse, but the moon is far away from the earth. It's at the apogee. So it's far, so far away from the earth, it's not big enough to completely cover the sun. Then that's what happens in a total solar eclipse. So it leaves a ring of fire around the sun. And, uh, and it's powerful because not only do we have the ring of fire suggesting that not that this is that's this will be the uh closing hurrah or you know way of closing up these this eclipse cauldron i like to call it a cauldron of transformational change uh but it's um with a star called porama and Porama is the star of prophecy. And I have spoken about that. I do have a whole video on this that I'll put in the show notes if you haven't seen it and you want to more, know more details. Um, but the, the short summary is um, prophecies are possibilities. It doesn't mean they will happen or they won't happen. A lot of it depends on what we choose and what we put our attention and our energy into. And uh, this is especially true for uh, prophecies we don't want to come true. We need to change our ways so that that we create something different. Prophecies, we do want to come true. We want to put our energy and attention on those things so they do come true. <laughs> and I I was uh, talking, I was asking uh, uh, Nalini and Sarah before we started, I was like this, leading up to this eclipse portal that we're in, I felt my body just buzzing and it's continuing to just be this like vibrating at this different level. And I feel like it's a frequency upgrade or something's going on. Like my body's trying to get um, adjusted to a new frequencies that's coming onto the planet at this time. And I'm sure that um, Nalini can especially talk, speak into this because she's having a similar experience. So, so if you're having physical symptoms and they may be different than buzzing or vibrating or whatever it is that's going on, they may be different than that, but it may be that it's this we're being upgraded into a higher frequency. It's just how it feels. And so after the um, annual or solar eclipse on October 2nd, we will have a Venus moon conjunction on October 5th. And it's um, the solar plexus chakra gate, the gate of power, where we are tuning into our own personal power. So how are we coming into our greater power? And we can be asking this question as we get lead up to October 5th, when this is going to happen. And it's happening with a star called Zubanel Janubi. And this is the star that is located in the constellation of the scales. Now, the a conjunction is taking place around 15 Scorpio. It also happens to be the cross quarter point that happens when the sun reaches the halfway point between the September equinox and the December solstice. Also sometimes referred to as Samhain, the, the, the midpoint between the two seasons that usually happens around November 7. And that's when the sun reaches 15 degrees Scorpio. So this Venus moon gate is activating that energy prior to us actually getting to that seasonal point. And uh, what that star is one of the stars of the scales um, in the con so in the constellation of the scales and the scales, it's like weighing the heart against the um, feather of Ma'at, you know, the, the weighing the heart of the dead is the story that's told about that, but also represents the scales of justice. And I like to think of justice as what just is. And sometimes we think of justice as well, if somebody did something wrong, they need to be punished for it. Or, um, but who, but, but whose standards did they do something wrong? <laughs> and so how are we uh, tuning to what is, um, what just is? If it's just, it's like, if we can never do anything wrong, really. Um, and, and if people, uh, I was just listening to something 
earlier today that was talking about how when people commit crimes and do terrible things, it's a call for love. They're, they're desperate inside themselves. And that they've done studies now that show that if they take criminals, murderers, and people who've done really horrible, awful things, and have them do meditation practices and, and or um, processes that allow them to get in touch with a deeper sense of love within themselves, it changes everything. So what is justice then? And if we maybe approach justice from a different perspective, we'd have a different experience of what just is in our world. So that's something that I feel like is very um, prominently activated at this time during this Venus moon gate and coming into our, into our personal power uh, individually. So that's something we can focus on. And, and what, how are we um, connecting also, because I see that, that this star along with its companion star, Zubin al-Shamali um, creates a, a stargate portal to other worlds. And this eclipse has been creating that as well. It's like otherworldly is one of the ways I've been describing how I've been feeling. Like, I don't, I feel like I'm in an altered state a lot of the time right now. And, uh, and maybe it's like tapping into an otherworldly energy. I don't really fully completely understand it yet, but it's just staying with it and being with it. And, uh, and then having this Venus moon gate activating a, that otherworldly energy, like the stargate to a new world could be as another way we could look at this Venus moon conjunction that's taking place on October 5th. So big, and I think things are changing probably in a way more rapidly than we can necessarily comprehend at this time with our mind. So it's maybe more with our whole being that we, if we are tuning in from a whole being place rather than trying to figure it out with our mind. So I, so just the invitation to relax, tune in, you know, not, not try to have to know the, all the answers or make it, make, have it be something specifically is a way that we can tune into this time. In addition to that, uh, Jupiter's going retrograde on October 9th. Uh, and so uh, and it's in Gemini and Gemini does, Gemini often is very much about connected to being connected to the mind, but there's also the reminder that the mind can't know it all. It wants to, it tries to, uh, it would love to, <laughs> but, but it's not going to happen. So, um, and, and because knowing goes beyond the mind ultimately. And so if we, so we don't want to be stuck there. And also there's that trickster energy. It's like, how are we seeing our reality in ways that are tricking us into thinking things are true this way, but not that way. And how do we go beyond the experience of feeling like what we're seeing as our reality is actually true. It may not be true. It may be that there's something else that's true, um, something beyond all that. Uh, so um, questioning, I guess it's a great time to be questioning our reality. And then a couple of days later, um, Pluto's going direct for the last time in Capricorn at 29 degrees Capricorn at that um, anoretic degree at that most comprehensive expression of Capricorn possible. And it'll be over 200 and um, maybe close to 240 years before it does it go, goes back into Capricorn um, and then does this again. So it's in Capricorn for about 16 years and went in in 2008. So 248 years from 2008 is when it goes back into Capricorn again. So it'll be a long time, not in our lifetime that we experience this. And Pluto is about the dissolution of the old so something new can come in. It's the alchemical cauldron also of transformational change. How are we transforming the structures of our reality? What we think is true, what we believe, what we have believed is true. And I just heard somebody um, giving a talk recently and she was saying that um, all beliefs are limiting, <laughs> even the good ones. <laughs> So, so it's like, oh, so at, at, you know, we, if we want to go beyond that, how do we let go of those things? I don't know what the answers are. It's just the question to be with at this time and, and to, to recognize that we have an unprecedented opportunity to really allow ourselves to co-create a new world. Uh, and as the Hopi 
say in their prophecy, it's we can create a world of peace, plenty, and illumination for everyone. Uh, and not maybe not everybody would choose that reality, but uh, maybe if the greater collective chooses it, it becomes the reality for most of us. That would be awesome. So these are some of the, the bigger events that are taking place right now. And the ones that can really, um, it, it's like everything seems to be pointing to the fact that it's an opportunity to um, create a new a new, a new reality, a new way of being, and, and perhaps go beyond the limits of the old to something that's um, extraordinary that we can't quite yet fully imagine. So with that, I'm going to pass this on to Nalini. <laughs> um, thank you, Kaylin. Wow, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> and there is a lot going on right now. And I, we were talking earlier and I've been feeling some of that innervation in the body, but I've been feeling this uh, cauldron or passage or corridor or whatever. It's like one of those boats that go down the Nile that the priestesses used to travel in. And the first eclipse sort of is one end. And, and then we go through with the equinox in the middle and then there's the other end. And this, this whole thing is, moving from one world to another, or maybe from different worlds to other different worlds. It definitely feels like a many-to-many -many relationship right now. Um, the trees all agree with me. They, <laughs> it's funny because um, our weather hasn't been that odd, although we've gotten less water, but um, you can just start to see nature's paintbrush on a few of the trees here, where because it's the Northern Hemisphere, that's, that autumn is coming. Um, and the rest of them, as it's been quite hot during the day, are just, you know, green and lovely. And normally things would start to turn. So it, it has felt to me like everything is happening from the inside out. I think it happens that way. Every time there's a huge change on any world. And what happened, um, I had just gone through, you know, a thing a life thing where and I got to see quite viscerally experience quite viscerally sitting across a desk from someone at a bank and what I was saying was I mean the exact words even were not what she was hearing and she's looking at these numbers in a computer which had been hacked and saying well this is what happened and I'm going no you know this is not what happened I'm I'm telling you so I ended up writing it all up but it was interesting that to me that it was so obvious we were sitting in very different realities and it wasn't quite as uncomfortable or painful as that can be for me, you know, in a physical space. It was just, oh, wow, you know, I'm being held this way and that's just this whole other reality and that's what they're going to do with it. And I could have gotten really upset. I remember when it first happened, there, there was some choice language on my part, but, <laughs> I, you know, that's not all that usual for me, but, you know, but then it was like, okay, something else is going on here. And it went right down, like beyond the root to the seed form of a trigger that is the depth of a pattern that's known that I've worked on for decades that, you know, that I wouldn't think had that much content to it. And I really got to see the architecture of the whole thing, which to me is, is lovely. I love cosmic architecture. And so this was, even though it was my own kind of horrific pattern, it was like, Oh, let's look at this and see. Well, and this was the trigger. This was really what did it. And it did have to, to do with being misunderstood and misinterpreted and how many of us go through that all the time on this world. And so it was that, okay, well, this can be let go. It needs to be let go. Show me how. And right at the equinox, what came through was a deeper, stronger dragon energy I mean, they're around this year, they're around with me a lot, but really strong, this really white, clear light of reality kind of dragon. And at the time, I was really appreciative. I appreciated the strength, you know, um, but I wasn't quite sure what that meant. 
you know, my visions I, I see all the time, but it's like, oh, okay. I don't usually interpret because source will show me when the time comes. But this time the dragon's energy was like, no, this is important. This is important. And over the last, you know, three or four days, it's been, well, that, particular white you could say dragon has to do with bringing in beauty and bringing it from the other realms into the physical and letting go of some of that duality of as above so below as within so without it's like no this all has to come together the quantum field doesn't really operate that way that's just a useful lens of perception and I looked up a couple of things because that's what I do. And um, the white dragon energy was about bringing the beauty, the art, music, writing. And my whole heart just lit up. It was like, yes, I mean, that's what I do. That's what comes through me. That's what, you know, bringing that inspiration that is sourced from source as source is, is what lights me up. It's not that there was any question. It was just that this was a, a validation of really cosmic proportions and showing me that as we are aligned, a very, very fluid alignment. I mean, the stars are fluid alignments. We just make, you know, pictures out of them. But they're very fluid alignments. It was as you're aligned, any of us, in that fluidity, this is what's being birthed and this is coming through an entirely new way. And I, I don't have any idea what that new way will be, but it was so exciting and felt like so much fun. And I went out into the garden and the trees and all, you know, most of the flowers are not blooming anymore, but there are a few here and there that are hiding. And they were like, you know, <laughs> just like so much fun because it's all about, as we go forward, all of us grounding, grounding, earthing, whatever you want to call it, all of this new inspiration, this new creative cosmic energy into Gaia, because that's where our bodies come from. That's where our manifestations come from. And that's not news exactly, but it's so strong right now that it feels like once this eclipse window passage cauldron, whatever closes, um, that's the beginning of the rollout to where the cosmic energies hit the road. So this will be really interesting to see. And it's just made me so happy for the last couple of days. It's almost like in spite of everything or in a whole really other reality from everything else that had been going on, there's just this joy and this peace and this power that is always available, especially through nature. So we are in a huge energy time anyway. So with that, I will hand it over to Sarah. Mm, thank you, Nalini and Kaylin. So it's very interesting um, just sitting here, listening to you both and essentially giving, because I'd arrived today, having been doing lots of things before I arrived, to allow myself to sit quietly and resource myself and the quietness and the reflections, essentially, with my cup of tea. But I was kind of smiling as I was listening to you both because um, my day, which is not, it's not been a bad day, it's just been that kind of day, um, has needed or is going to need now a good deal of, um, I'm going to say this as a reflection of myself and I smile with a sense of humour, forced rest on my own behalf in that I just know I need to be quiet um, so it was interesting to listen to you, Kaylin, talking about, you know, this, um, frequency that you've been experiencing for me. It's been one of heat, like really hot. The other night I woke up and I was just so hot and I was just like, okay, so I'm just going to take everything off. And it, it's actually, actually not warm here. And even doing that, I was still absolutely boiling hot. You know, it was a real internal combustion and I just happened to mention it. Uh, in something I was doing and I had two people come back to me who I didn't know had been listening it was a kind of live thing on social media who said oh I've been having the same thing and so that helped because it wasn't a thing like a cold or a flu or anything like that so and what we 
kind of decided, although this is very conversational and still quite new to us, is that some what we had in common is that we work deeply with nature and that we were transmuting something through our own bodies. The earth in our body was transmuting something outside or in our earth. I don't really know. So as you said, Kaylin, if anybody else is listening who has had these heat symptoms, which are not traditional type heat cyst, you know, it's not a hot flush, not menopause. I know what that feels like. I get those too. <laughs> this is different. And it's not a flu type thing either, although it feels a bit like it, but it's not. So it would be really interesting to hear because I think by talking about it, it normalizes it a little bit and makes us feel it's it's okay kind of thing. So the other thing that was really amusing me as I listened, just again, this amusement is on me, not on anybody else, is the need. The only way we can do this is being by being quiet. Um, I'm about to, um, what's the word? I was going to write, it's not really the word write, bring through me the final element of a course that I've been writing for over a year now that's been through all of the different elements. And the final element to do is fire. And I've been kind of listen, uh, looking forward to fire because I'm quite fiery myself. And I was like, yeah, we'll do this thing. And as it's got closer, it the fire energies are saying, no, this is not what we need to do. What you need to do is be quiet and allow the fire action piece, you know, the things that you do from everything else to be birthed from the yin. And I kind of know this with my head, you know, I think many of us do that, that the yang is birthed of the yin. And now I'm really being asked to look at it and to, in inverted commas, teach it. And so I'm a little bit kind of lost within it. I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. So here we go with fire. And I had all this kind of syllabus, if you like, kind of lined up sitting next to me. I was like, okay, so I just need to write it. And now I'm being asked to just slow right, right down. And I think it's what you've both been saying is that we don't know now for all of us. We don't know how this is going to be. We don't know how to do it. At least our heads don't. And so the only way that we're going to find out how to share what we do, how to, you know, build a business or whatever you want to call it on the outside. Yes, it'll look a little bit like it does right now, but what comes through it, you know, what's sitting, it's almost like the fire underneath it is going to be burning differently. So, yeah, it's kind of where I'm at. And, uh, and then coming home today and looking at the clock and going, oh my goodness, I'm going to be late and all these kinds of things. I also just had some phrases go through my mind. It's like, okay, so sometimes the feminine is quiet and she sources the masculine part of us. But then sometimes there's a really fierce feminine, feminine that goes, no, 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 no. You have only got this window to do it. So you just do the thing that you need to do. But she's fueled by the yin. She's fueled by the passion. She's fueled by the earth, kind of like embers almost. So I was just, I'm just musing aloud here. It's really what I'm, what's flowing through me. I'm just starting, I think, to understand fire and what it means and how we can use her, him on the earth. And uh, what a time to be doing it in this eclipse window. Yeah, so thank you and blessings to you all. Thank you. So you're reminding me, um, Sarah, that there is going to be a the closest full moon of the year on October 17th, Aries full moon. <laughs> <laughs> very fiery, fun. very fiery energy. And, um, and it's happening around close to the same degree as the as the total solar eclipse that happened back in April. So bringing it all back around to that point. And it's, it's literally, I mean, we entered a, an eclipse cauldron in April 
like or late March, April of uh, of this year. And now we're in this eclipse cauldron um, that's going to be completing on October 2nd. So the, it feels like something got started earlier in the year and now is it's um, being supercharged again at this time and uh, we're feeling it. So that's really awesome. Yeah, so thank you everyone. We those, oh. those deep roots. We're going to need those deep roots, yeah. aren't we? So that we don't burn out. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of rescue remedy. <laughs> Got plenty of that. Yeah. Plenty of rescue remedy. Yes. Some bottles on my desk. <laughs> yeah. So any that anything you want to say, Melini, to follow up on that? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> and and to be okay with the not knowing. Uh mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh I love Fred Allen Wolf when he was uh the last line in the in the movie What the Bleep, and he said it's not about being in the know, it's about being in the mystery. And that's literally the opportunity we have right now. So mm -hmm. yay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Look forward to when we will connect with you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.